Okay, so thank you. I'm Dr. Wayne Pilkington from the Department of Electrical Engineering at Cal Poly. And what I want to speak to you about briefly today is how we engage, try to engage our freshman students in electrical engineering by um, building and programming autonomous Arduino-based robots. And here's the, here's the opportunity and the problem that we have for our incoming freshmen. They're a great group of people, a lot of fun to teach. They come with such enthusiasm, such excitement, such anticipation. But they also come with, well, some, as we heard, some not necessarily great attitudes, um, some short attention spans, a lot of insecurities. And so uh, our challenge is to try to capture them and engage them and help them decide whether electrical engineering is really where they want to be in the long term. So I'll briefly go over our motivation for this laboratory that I'm talking about, our EE151 Intro to Electrical Engineering Lab course, um, and the course objectives we have there, and how we've kind of modified those objectives based on some, some uh, new needs that we're recognizing. And the approach that we're, new approach we're taking to instill in that now um, to get at some of our new objectives. And the basic approach that I'll be talking about is how we've incorporated more robotics, more programming introduction to our students, and how that we're leveraging that to help them in future courses. A little bit on student feedback. This is just a work in progress. We're, we're, we're through the first iteration, more to do, but I can give you a little bit of assessment data that we have and an idea of where we think we're taking this. So first, the motivation here is that, uh, is in our understanding, a very large percent of freshman EE students begin their course with us with a pretty vague idea of what electrical engineers do in their profession. And a lot of them are very uncertain about whether they're in the right major or not. Now that's a particularly problematic for us at Cal Poly. We're a polytechnic university like Cal Poly Pomona in that our curriculum is designed to front load a lot of their electrical engineering introduction courses. By the time they're through their sophomore year, they've had nine EE-specific courses that the MEs don't take that the, and no one else takes. And so for them, if they decide in the middle of their sophomore year, gee, this wasn't for me, it's really difficult to switch majors without having a significant impact on the time to graduation. So it's great for the student who knows what they want to do coming in, for the one who's not so certain, it's a difficult curriculum design to work around. So what we try to do in this course is to give students a preview of the things they're going to be encountering in their electrical engineering curriculum in this first lab. And hopefully by doing that, get them a little bit excited about what they're going to be doing while we give them this kind of broad overview. So lots of breadth, no depth. Um, you know, Ohm's law and maybe Lorentz force equations about as technical as it gets but we cover a lot of different areas. These were the learning objectives that were originally set up for this course, and I'll just highlight a few. Basically, we're trying to describe electrical engineering, fear, uh, <laughs> electrical engineering field um, and get them engendered with some enthusiasm for learning, help them understand what are the different areas of specialization within electrical engineering through a variety of different hands-on laboratory experiences. And, um, through those, we're also kind of helping to lay a foundation for certain skills that they're going to need in future laboratory courses and introduce some ideas to them, some basic ideas of electrical engineering. So when they see them again in the, in, in the later courses, they're at least the terminology is a little familiar to them. So it's not quite so daunting. Now, in addition to all this, what we've been learning from feedback from students, um, anecdotal and surveyed data, is attaining those, all those objectives consistently. And particularly for some students, the course is a bit overwhelming. And for others, it's just less than engaging, or at least it used to be. While we were trying to curve them to, into electrical engineering, we were scaring some of them away. Uh, and so we've been taking this course through a number of iterative kind of evolutionary changes over the years, taking, getting rid of some less interesting projects, simplifying the procedures, um, adding a lot more background and pre-lab information so they know a little better what they're doing rather than just following a cookbook and walking out of the lab. We've been applying kind of these general approaches. But we've also had to encounter, uh, had to deal with another problem um, in, in that one of the higher failure rate courses that we've had in our total curriculum for all our engineering students has been their first programming course, our CSC 101 course. And particularly our electrical engineers were having difficulty with this class. Um, and so our hope was that, well, 
those who have never done any programming before, maybe we can give them a softer introduction to programming through this introductory course. And so that's one of the motivations behind the changes that we've been making to the, making to the class. The most recent iteration, we've been ha having them play with, work with robots, but now robots that are built on a simple Arduino microprocessor. And so we begin the course with them learning a little bit about programming and what a microprocessor is. And by the end of the course, they've got a fully autonomous working robot working with that simple microprocessor. Hoping that this is a more engaging entree into electrical engineering for them, maybe a more accessible introduction to computer programming for them. And in, the, in this whole uh, new design, students work in teams to build up their robots, starting with just the core processor, and then adding one subsystem at a time, learning something about those subsystems, whether it's motors or sensors, using that as the way to give them a broad exposure to what's in electrical engineering and what's ahead for them, but doing it in the context of the robotic system so they have a, a grounding to work from. So they're learning about each subsystem, tackling increasingly difficult programming tasks, starting from the very simple and working our way up. And still, again, touching on all the different concepts in different areas of electrical engineering just within the context of that autonomous robot system. So I'll just take you quickly through uh, and see what the kinds of things that they're doing. The first project, they walk in the first, first week of class. They've already purchased their Arduino Uno microprocessor for this course and for their introductory lecture course. We have them hook it up to a breadboard and make some LEDs blink, the classic first programming assignment. And they get pretty excited about seeing things flash. They've actually done something, made it do something that they can visually see. By the second week, traditionally, we always introduce them to the laboratory equipment, what's a voltmeter, what's a power supply. That's all good. But now, in addition to that, we have them fire up their Arduino and turn it into a voltmeter. And so by doing that, they learn how to do some math in the, pro in the programming context. And they learn how to use a serial monitor display to output some information that they can use in the future for debugging. The third week, we usually spend teaching them how an oscilloscope and a function generator work and how our resistors and capacitors interact for transient and frequency responses. Well, we do a little bit of that, but then we say, well, here's your Arduino. It happens to have a pulse width modulated output capability. Let's create your waveforms with that, and let's hook that up to the scope and make the measurements with that. Again, bringing the context back to the Arduino, to the microprocessor, learning how to code, learning how to use a new instruction on pulse width modulation thinking about concepts of frequency, amplitude, and those things that they'll need to know for the future. Fourth week, we have to, have to put aside the, the Arduino, and we work, teach them a little bit about, well, semiconductors, particularly um, diodes. Um, they're also in another companion course. A lot of them are building a DC power supply in their IME 156 class. And so we open up the, the box, and they're soldering components to a board for that and putting in a chassis for that course, in our course, we let them see what's going on inside there. What are the electrical components doing? So we, again, leverage another course, incorporate that, and integrate that. Week five is about AM radios, how they work, frequency spectrum, that kind of thing. Have them hook up an antenna and see what they can see on a, on a, with an FFT computation with an oscilloscope, and also build a simple crystal radio kit that they can, um, can actually tune in a couple stations in San Luis Obispo and hear it happening. And then we pull out the Arduinos again and have it make some music. So again, taking the ideas of frequency and in that process, uh, learn how to use some more Arduino commands, how to do time-based kinds of things, begin to use constants and fixed parameters in their programs, and relate this idea of frequency to, oh, I can hear a pitch. So bringing it to bring it into the real world for them, and in the process they say they don't know it, but they program this particular tune. It turns out to be the Star Wars theme, so they kind of like that. Week six is about DC motors. We've done this for a long time, have them build a DC motor out of winding their own wires, putting a magnet under it, running some current through it from a big battery, making that happen. And then we said, well, this is a perfect time to start building up the robot. Let's put your chassis together. Let's mount the motors to it. Let's talk about how you interface a, a, uh, an H-bridge drive circuit to it. And so they're, they're thinking about these different concepts and how voltage moves around things and what is current and what's my motor actually doing. Well, I just built one, so I kind of know what's going on in there. 
And then week seven, we talk a lot more about moving their, their understanding of computer programming forward in a big way. Um, and it's spent, you know, they have a robot that can actually do something. And actually, in the previous uh, lab, they've gotten as far as getting it moving and made the robot dance to their favorite tune. So they have to coordinate movements, um, do some time-based things, do inline sequences. And then in this class, we take them through all the basic programming structures. What are functions? What are loops, conditional branches? By having them execute some basic robot movements in all different ways, using all these different constructs. So again, we're using the, lang the simplified language of the Arduino, where this stuff is easy to use. They see the structures and constructs and ideas of computer programming in a simplified environment. So we're hoping when they get to their computer programming class, they'll see them again and remember, oh, I did that with my robot. So that's, that's what we're trying to achieve here. In week eight, they add some sensors. We, we uh, learn about optical sensors and acoustic sensors and how to interface them to the microprocessor. Uh, what does analog to digital conversion mean? Um, what are some, uh, what's the difference between digital signals and analog signals? And then in week eight, they take those and apply a, an algorithm to make the robot become autonomous so that it can, we put them in a closed circuit, they use the sensors to detect when they're getting close to a wall and just keep walking around avoiding it. Use, and they begin to learn how to program algorithms, how to use some of these different programming constructs they've been, been uh, working with in the previous lab. Week nine, we put it all together. We had the last set of sensors, a set of sensors underneath that enable it to see a line under, underneath and apply a simple control algorithm introducing the idea of the control systems to following that line. And this is all they've been building up these different capabilities that they're all going to need for their final design project, which they actually started in the first week with a set of customer requirements that they've through the course of the through the weeks of the course been turning into a final design. And they're asked to take their robot and make a robotic egg transformer or porter for nuclear power plants. So they have to get an egg from the kitchen to the control room past the nuclear reactor with their robot. And we give them the basic robot shell, and they've got to add their own Rube Goldberg mechanism to hold the egg on the, on the uh, robot, carry it along the path that's marked with a black line, avoid fuel container obstacles, so they have to detect obstacles and get around them. And then finally, the hard part, dispensing the egg into a cup of water. We give them a cup of the water, they have to figure out how they're going to carry it and dispense it. Now, they've had no mechanical engineering classes. They haven't done statics and dynamics yet. All they have is their creative minds and whatever money they want to spend at Radio Shack. Um, and interestingly, most of them don't choose electrical solutions. They come up with some mechanical kind of solution. Um, but in the process, we take them through a complete product. They start with a turning the the customer requirements into some specifications, each functional decomposition. They have to brainstorm some different alternatives to their design approach for the mechanism. They have to figure out how to quantitatively assess their, their alternatives, build some prototype, make it work, and do some verification on it. So that the last week they can do their project demonstration. And no two, no two uh, versions have ever come out the same. It's amazing the creativity. Um, and probably about 60, 70 percent of them work. We drop and lose a few eggs, and but students are always proud of their their accomplishment. They've had a good time doing it. A lot of them have stayed up to midnight the night before. It still happens. They've got those bad habits still, but um, but it's worked out to be a good a good learning experience. In terms of our feedback. Um, we actually have about 100 students at a time going through this course. I teach one of the sections, and we have other people teaching the others. In my particular section, when I took a survey at the end, 90% of the students either strongly agreed or agreed that the course helped them understand what an EE does, one of our objectives for the class. 80% agreed, strongly agreed that it made the EE major seem more interesting. Good. 60% strongly agreed or agreed that that helped confirm for them that they really should be in electrical engineering. 
10% disagreed, though, or strongly disagreed with that. So we've convinced 10% that they were in the wrong place. And we did query them on one of the questions and how certain they were about whether or not they should be in, in the EE major both before and after the class. 40% of the students didn't change their level of certainty. 35% raised their level of certainty. And 25% said, well, I'm a little less certain now than before. And we might initially take that again as a failure, but maybe not if you learn early enough that maybe this isn't where you want to be. Better now, while there's still time to make the change, get into something that would really make you successful and engaged. And, and uh, so that's the way we're looking at that. But much more data to do, and that's really the further work. We've got more students we can do that survey with that we will. Those students are now just taking that programming course. So, it's, so I'm hoping in a few weeks to ask them, how did it go? Did this help or not? Um, this was a first iteration, lots of, lots of improvement yet to happen, so very much a work in progress. Um, probably have to do a more gradual ramp up in the programming demands and things like that. Um, especially for inexperienced programmers, we got some initial feedback that it was a little too overwhelming still for them. Um, so much more to be done. That's in a nutshell what we did. We felt the, myself and the other student instructors who had, did the course are really excited about it and we're hoping to keep this going year after year and make it a little better each year. Questions? Um, the Arduino they each buy is now available for under ten bucks, under ten dollars if you get it under ten. The robot, and this was our first year doing this and tallying it up, getting in the parts ourselves. The robot kit costs about a hundred dollars, and it's a team of four students who will be working with one robot. So that's divided between four students. They, they work it out the way they choose to. Um, whether they usually it sounds like they've been they did kind of all chip in, but then at the end they have to decide who gets the robot. So um, the gentleman sitting next to you teaches the companion course and he asks them everyone to get their own to play with. <laughs> Yeah, the hundred dollars a person would uh, would be too and much. Then, and then the final project, are they? They have to stay under a certain budget for three. Yes, yes. We ask them to keep it uh, keep it under fifty dollars again, shared between them. And usually, they're when they they tally up the the actual costs, including the cost of their engineering time. They have we have them keep track of that. Apply a, a professional wage to it, so they see what value they put into it. Um, but the the material costs. It's usually bailing wire and paper clips and right. styrofoam. So it's you know four bucks, five bucks. It never is a lot. Well, never, never, a, never is a long time. And so, you said the students are four. Four, right? We well, they work in the lab in pairs. We put two pairs together to make a quad team for the robot. I'm sure our advising department has that. <laughs> I, I don't, I, I don't see that data. I want to see how, how much, how, how, how big the shift is. Well, we know, we know. Obviously, they don't go the literature. No, the there is a fair number that, that stay within engineering and EE. Some of them will change a little bit to computer engineers, for example. Um, but, uh, but the rest, I'm not certain. Here, there, Arduino has its own simplified language, um, which has some basic, some simple functions that they need to learn. But they, it also includes all the basic constructs of a lang of a structured language, if then else's, loops, that kind of thing. So they're still learning. The, it's yeah, it's, it is a C-like language. It's not object oriented. It's 
a really great long question. The answer is no. I, I, I don't. Not that it's they're not they're not a correlation. I just don't know. We haven't we haven't looked at that. Um, this cl again because this class has an intention to keep them excited. The grading's pretty easy on it, and so there's an, we won't we wouldn't gain a lot of rigorous information from grading information. But to me, the more the soft skills that they come out with their own self-assessment is is data that we can put our, our do something with. This is a three hour a week lab. Um, now that we've added this component, we they generally have a pre-lab assignment that they're doing and they're probably investing one to two hours outside in that too. Till the final project, then they're up all night. Uh, we don't have a, in the electrical engineering curriculum, we don't have a robotics class per se. Our mechanical engineering department does have a mechatronics um, sequence that includes the kinematics and that kind of thing that would be required for robotics. So we would, we would send our students there for some of the technical electives. Thank you. Thank you very much.